Good morning, everybody. As you can tell, I am not Norm. My name is Paul. I will be your, oops, let me get rid of, I will be your speaker today. Um, welcome to Pentecost Sunday. Also, I wanted to announce, uh, please read your bulletin. Uh, you will find a slip of paper in the bulletin <clears throat> for you to mark your presence, to be placed in the little purple boxes uh, for you those of you at home, welcome. You can cut out your own little slip of paper and drop it in some handy box that you may have at home to be able to participate. You will also find in your bulletin, or if you go online, a place for you to place your, your donations uh, for the ongoing. I wanted to remark this week, we have had the third that I know of, third New Mexican go into space from a successful launching at Spaceport America. So wanted to remark on that. And now also at the back of your bulletin, I want to bring up the, the Vacation Bible School, which will be June 26th through 30th, which will have a space theme. So that, that brings in the whole nature of why I brought up the uh, third New Mexican going to space. And now it's 
Yes. Good morning on this beautiful Pentecost Sunday. We have a little bit of instruction for you for the launching of our balloons depicting the breath of the Holy Spirit. We have the three Taylor tribe children, young people, they're not children anymore, are going to prompt you when it is your turn to launch the balloon while there is music happening at the same time. So, um, Taylors, which side is going to go first? This side is going to go first, so you guys watch Rosa. And then Caleb, you're second, so this side watch Caleb. And the middle will go, last but not least, if you watch Eamon. The next announcement is today at 2 o'clock, we are going to have a wonderful chamber concert here in our sanctuary. It's a woodwind quintet. There are five players. Three are from our congregation, Vicki, Bill, and Rusty. And it'll be about an hour. It's, they, they play great music, so you do not want to miss it if you can be here at 2 o'clock this afternoon. I believe we're ready to start with you reading your meditation. Come to us, Holy Spirit, 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 come to us
comrade of God, disperse the shadows over us, renew and strengthen your people. Please join me in calling ourselves to worship using the words printed in our bulletins. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, fire and flame your ministers.
please pray with me. Holy Father, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of the Holy Spirit that we may have a right understanding in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who breathes that same Spirit upon us and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Every week as we worship together, we have the opportunity to admit to ourselves, to each other, and to God that we do not always live as we are called. It is in our confession when, where we realize our desire for God and our hope for God's mercy. It is in admitting the truth of our lives that we take the first step toward wholeness and healing. In this time of confession, this time of opening our hearts, let us remember that God is merciful and just, willing and eager to offer grace and mercy. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father and Creator of all things, you breathe the life in, into each of your children. You know our every need and care for us faithfully. Yet too often, we fail to follow your call and your guidance. We confess that we have not loved you as you would have us love. We have not always been peacemakers in our families, our communities, 
and in our world. Loving God, forgive us that our love for you has not been more passionate, that our dreams and visions have fallen short of your expectations for us. Send your spirit upon us so that we may witness to the good news of your love and fill us with joyful hope so that we may live more Christ-like lives. Hear our prayer, O God of everlasting love. Amen. Hear and believe the good news. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new beginning. What was old is past and gone. Everything has become alive with new possibilities. Step forward into fullness of life with the certain knowledge that in Christ we are forgiven and freed. In Jesus, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. How can we be sure that God has forgiven our sin? God, in infinite and perfect love, having provided in the covenant of grace through the mediation and sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, a way of life and salvation, sufficient for and adopted to the whole lost race of man, doth freely offer this salvation to all men in the gospel. This effectual call is of God's free and special grace alone, not from anything at all foreseen in man who is altogether passive therein. Until being quickened and renewed by the Holy Spirit, he is thereby enabled to answer this call and to embrace the grace offered and conveyed in it.
Can I have all the young disciples join me up front, please? How many of you like hot air balloons? They're pretty cool, aren't they? Now, how many of you know how they work? You know how they work? Yes, fire. Fire's a good answer for that. Well, hot air balloons didn't always used to exist. We had to invent them at first. And so in 1783 in France, two brothers named the Montgolfier brothers, and I had to look up how to pronounce their names because it's French. They flew for the first time in a hot air balloon and they were able to fly from one end of Paris to the other. And when they explained how it worked, they said that the fire gave off this thing called Montgolfier gas, which they said lifted the balloon up into the air since it was lighter than the rest of the air. It turns out they were wrong. What we know now is that fire produces, warms up the air around it, and hot air, as it turns out, rises while cold air sinks. And so the way hot air balloons work is the big fire that's in there heats up the air inside the balloon so that it rises, pulling the rest of the balloon up with it. But of course, that's kind of hard to look at because it's just fire in its air. There's you'd think that you know the fire's producing something and that's what's giving the balloon the ability to float, but it's not. In the same way, sometimes we get wrapped up in trying to produce things to show that we're disciples of Christ. And when we get wrapped up in producing things, sometimes we forget that simply doing can affect the people around us and show to them that we are disciples of Christ without needing to produce anything, just the way we live our life. And so one thing that y'all should remember as you go through life is be aware that you don't have to produce things in order to show how much you love God. Sometimes all you have to do is be that kind voice that helps other people rise above where they were. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for these children and remind them as they go through life that they don't have to produce and sometimes they can just affect, that they can be the change without needing to produce anything physical. Amen.
Please pray with me. Loving God, on this joyful day of Pentecost, we come before you with grateful hearts, recognizing the power of your Holy Spirit working in our lives. As we gather in this sacred space, we are reminded of the call to serve one another, just as your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us through his life and ministry. Today we lift up our voices in prayer, seeking guidance and strength to embrace the spirit of service that Pentecost inspires within us. Gracious God, we acknowledge that the world around us is in need. We see the pain and suffering in our brothers and sisters, and we are moved to make a difference. Empower us, O Lord, with your Holy Spirit, that we may be agents of your love and compassion in our communities. We pray for those who are hungry, homeless, and without shelter. May we be your hands extended, providing nourishment and shelter to those in need. Help us to break down the walls of indifference and build bridges of solidarity so that may all may experience your abundant grace. We pray for those who are lonely and brokenhearted, who long for companionship and understanding. May we be your loving presence, offering comfort and a listening ear. Teach us to be patient and compassionate, reminding us that every person we encounter is a beloved child of yours. We pray for those who are burdened by sickness, disease, and mental anguish. May we be instruments of your healing and peace, extending a hand of support and praying for their restoration. <clears throat> Grant wisdom to medical professionals and researchers as they seek to bring healing to the afflicted. And as it is Memorial Day, we pray for the families and loved ones of those who gave themselves and sacrificed and died while serving in the US military, including veterans who died from any cause as well as those who died while on active duty in combat. Lord, we recognize that service is just not a one-time act, but it is a way of life. Help us to cultivate a servant's heart, seeing the needs of others and responding with love, kindness, and generosity. Open our eyes to the opportunities for service that surround us each day, whether big or small. 
We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us that true greatness lies in humble service. Amen.
The first lesson today is from Acts 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in our own language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In their own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexing one to another. What does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. And listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. <clears throat> the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Moving on to letter of Paul to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 12. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, <clears throat> and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by this one Spirit, to another <clears throat> the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit... We were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Excuse me. <clears throat> it's after nine so I can drink. I want to start this morning with a bit of an introduction. Hi, I'm Paul Deason. Many of you have seen me in church for years, but this is my first opportunity to bring you the Sunday message. 
When I was growing up in Central California, I was torn in my desire to either be an astronaut or to be a Presbyterian minister. I certainly did not want to continue with manual labor jobs in the fields, the garages, or in the fruit packing houses. When I could not find a U.S. college that would allow me to major in physics and minor in theology, I decided to try for the role of astronaut. So I majored in physics and joined the Marines to fly, following the path of John Glenn. So I did not become an astronaut. I followed my physics degree and with degrees in experimental statistics and moved from the Marines to working for the U.S. Army as an analyst. I had an opportunity to do some humanitarian work in the Middle East and Asia, so I took a degree in anthropology. Finally, I had the opportunity to take the courses to become a Presbyterian Commission pastor in 2018, and so at Fula, here I am. Not a member, not a minister, but along a path of service to Christ and to you, the community of Christ. Today we gather to reflect upon the extraordinary event that took place on the day of Pentecost as recounted in Acts chapter 2. We focus on the pouring out of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples. We also look at St. Paul's call to service in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 as it applies to each of us. But first, let's look at fire, the physics of fire, and Pentecost. Fire is a powerful and mysterious force with the ability to both create and destroy. It can bring warmth and light, but it also cause devastation and harm. In the Bible, fire is often used as a symbol of God's presence and power. Fire in scripture is used analogously and spiritually and physically. In Luke chapter 12, verse 49, in one of the rare glimpses which our Lord gives us into his innermost heart, his thought of his mission and his feelings about it, Jesus said, I am come to bring fire on the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. Speaking analogously of spiritual fire, he says that he is going to set the world on fire and he did it. His precursor, John the Baptist, as recounted in Matthew 3, verse 11, told the penitents who had come to his baptism, I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The baptism with fire would convey in its turn the thought of a power at once destroying evil and purifying good. In Acts chapter 2, we see the Holy Spirit manifesting in a powerful and in a tangible way. The text tells us that suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. This was not a metaphorical fire, but a physical manifestation of the Holy Spirit's power. What can we learn from the physics of fire presented to us in this physical manifestation of the Holy Spirit's power? First, we see that fire has the power to transform. Heraclitus, the ancient Greek philosopher who lived around the 5th century BC, was convinced that fire was the cause of everything in the cosmos. When Heraclitus spoke of the power of the flaming combustion of fuel and oxygen, it seemed to almost defy an adequate explanation. Physical fire is not limited to what we are familiar with every day. For example, lightning is fire. The sun and the stars are fire, but much hotter than the flames that end up as carbon gas in our experience. The fire of the sun creates almost all energy related to substantial change, such as photosynthesis and evaporation, which gives us plant life and rain. The point is, fire changes things, transforms things, 
Just as the Holy Spirit transformed the disciples on that day, fire can transform objects and substances. It can turn wood into ash, water into steam, and metal into liquid. This is a reminder that God has the power to transform as well, to change us from the inside out and to make us new creations in Christ. Second, fire spreads. Once a fire is lit, it can spread quickly and consume everything in its path. The tongues of fire that appeared on the disciples did not remain isolated to each individual, but spread to everyone in the room. In the same way, the Holy Spirit's power can spread throughout the church and the world, igniting hearts and transforming lives. Third, fire is a source of light. The flames that appeared on the disciples provided light during darkness. This is a reminder that Christ is the light of the world and that we are called to be reflections of that light. As we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives, we must be willing to surrender ourselves to God and allow him to fuel our spiritual growth. Fourth, fire requires fuel. In order to sustain a fire, we must be a source of fuel. Similarly, for the Holy Spirit's power to work in our lives, we must you and I, we must be willing to surrender ourselves to God and allow him to fuel our spiritual growth and service. Finally, fire can be dangerous. While fire has many positive uses, it can also be dangerous and destructive. We must respect its power and use it wisely. In a similar manner, the Holy Spirit's power can be misused if we do not submit ourselves to God's will and direction in the service of Christ in his church. We are called to service and humility to our church, our community, and to God's creation. St. Paul spoke to the Corinthians about service. Beginning in verse 11, all those are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. There's a famous story that illustrates this spirit of service. It said that once there was a group of animals who were arguing about who was the most important amongst them. The lion claimed he was the most important because he was king of the jungle. The elephant argued that he was the most important <clears throat> because he was the largest and the strongest. The monkey claimed that he was the most important because he was the most intelligent. As the argument continued, a little bird spoke up and said, I may not be the strongest or the smartest, but I can still be of service. The other animals laughed and asked, how can a small bird be of service to them? The bird replied, I have a special talent. I can fly high up in the trees and see things from a different perspective. I can use this talent to help you all. The other animals were skeptical but decided to give the bird a chance. They asked the bird to fly up and tell them what he saw. The bird flew up into the trees and looked down on the animals. He saw there was a hunter approaching them with a net to capture them all. The bird quickly flew down and warned the animals. Thanks to the little bird's unique talent and willingness to serve, the animals were able to escape the hunter's net and to remain safe. <clears throat> this story illustrates the importance of recognizing and valuing everyone's unique talents and services and abilities and how they can be used in service to others. As stated starting verse four in the Corinthians passage, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. <coughs> 
How are you exemplifying the little bird who may not be the strongest, the smartest, but able with your unique talents to serve the community of the Lord, the community of God's world. In conclusion, the physics of fire in Acts chapter 2 reminds us of the power and presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Let us be open to his transformative work and allow his light to shine through us into the world. May we be like the disciples on the day of Pentecost, filled with the Holy Spirit and ready to spread his message to all who will listen. As St. Paul said, we have a variety of gifts, a variety of services, but the same Spirit, the same Lord, the same community in the Spirit of Jesus Christ. So as you leave today, Please contemplate the phrase, leave to serve, and how you may be of service to your community. In the name of the Lord, amen. from this place. May the fire of your spirit burn brightly within us, igniting a passion for service that transforms lives and brings hope to the world. Empower us to be your ambassadors, shining your light in the darkest corner of society. Go forth now in service. Live in peace. And may the Lord God of love and peace delight to dwell within you. Amen. Mm-hmm.